done. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer world on high to fairer. Oh, shout it, we're marching to Zion. It's the beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to heavenly Zion. Oh, one more time, sing with me now. Oh, we're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to heavenly Zion. That beautiful city of God. All right, you warming up. What was the other request? 530. What is that? Yeah, this gentleman uh, family was crossing the ocean. And there was a storm, and all the children died. And he went up to his room and wrote this song, When Peace Like a River. When peace light is well, it is well. Amen, amen. Is Alala Tunji ready? Alala Tunji, is he ready? We're going to do a <laughs> 373. You're in the singing mood today, huh? <laughs> All righty. You can't wear us out because we love to sing. <laughs> Seeking the loss. Now we have some more men, so. Man, I'm going to ask you to stand up with me. Stand like men and let's sing it together. The ladies can sit down, but the men, I want the men to lead out on this here. <laughs> Seeking the loss, yet kindly entreating. Wanderers on the mountainous ring Come unto me, his message repeating Words of the master speaking All right, men, going afar Going afar upon the mountain Bring in the wanderers back again Into the fold of my Redeemer Jesus the Lamb for sinners slain Seeking the Lord Stand pointing to Jesus, souls that are weak and hearts that are sore, leading them forth in the ways of salvation, showing the path to life and more. All right, man, strong. Going afar upon the mountain, bringing the wanderers back again into the fall of my Redeemer, Jesus the Lamb. For sinners slain. Thus I would go. Thus I would go on missions of mercy, 
following Christ from day unto day, cheering the faint and raising the fallen, pointing the lost to Jesus away. All right, men, going afar upon the mountain. Bring in the wanderers back again into the fold of my Redeemer, Jesus the Lamb for sinners say. One more time. Going afar upon the mountain, bringing the wanderers back again into the fold of my Redeemer, Jesus the Lamb. For sinner slain, slain. Give yourself a hand. You did good. You did good. All right, Ella Ramon, you can have our opening prayer. And All right, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful and so blessed by your presence here with us this Sabbath day. We thank you for all the blessings that you have poured out upon us in this camp meeting. We thank you for the messages. We thank you for the, the spiritual food and the physical food. We thank you for the nature, the wonderful nature that we have here around us. And we also thank you, Lord, that... As you have promised um, in that statement in Desire of Ages, that you draw closest to us on the Sabbath day, and that you answer our request even before the Sabbath is ended. Lord, we are so thankful, Lord, for you today, and we just pray that your presence will, will continue to be with us. We pray in a special way for um, your manservant, um, Dr. Olitunji, that is going to present. I pray that you will be with him and that you will bless him. And also the panelists that will be with him as well. I pray that you will um, anoint them, Lord, as they speak to us. And may our minds be in tune with what you have to share with us and be prepared for what is to come. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. All right. Happy Sabbath again, everybody. Oh, man, are you excited? Amen. We're one more Sabbath closer to eternity. Amen. Amen. And we just give God the praise. But we want to welcome you to our afternoon program. And we just thank God for each and every one of you that is here today. And we're going to get right into it. We're not going to waste any time. But before we do that, let us um, have one more word of prayer as we open the word. Father in heaven, we dare not open the word without um, asking for your presence to come into this room. Thank you, Lord, for the singing. Thank you for all those who have participated. Be with those who are on their way. Be with those who are watching. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. I've been asked um, to do what we've been doing at Stateline for about a year now. Um, I will have to say that um, the Bible is true when it says that all things work together for the good. You know, um, before COVID, if we had 300 people watching us at Stateline on a video, we were doing well. But um, the things changed with COVID. Um, we had to, uh, we were shut down. No, we, was, we never really closed our church at Stateline, but we had to minimize the attendees. So we did a panel discussion. And then, um, you know, I'm just going to say it. I had some members that were saying, you talk about the Pope too much on Sabbath morning. I had members that said that. 
you know. But look what the Hope is doing every single week, right? So they said, why don't you just do it in the afternoon, not on Sabbath morning? And one day I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do the Sunday Law update in the afternoon. And on August the 1st, almost a year ago, um, uh, we had about five panelists and we talked about a lot of controversial stuff. It's probably very controversial. I almost thought maybe it was a little too much. But do you know that video went viral on the Internet to where it got to 60,000 people? And all of a sudden, every week, people just started. We just started. We saw our viewership rise from 1.7 thousand. Now it's 14 thousand. And we're having 25, 35 thousand views on a um, on any given Sabbath. And uh, we have pictures here that maybe I can show you um, of what we're seeing. And let me tell you this right here. This thing has put uh, the truth on the map to where all, <laughs> we was getting uh, calls and um, emails, people asking, are y'all a conference church? And I said, yes, St. Lawrence a conference church. How long are they going to let you preach it? <laughs> I had somebody call me last night, brother and sister James. I got to ask you a question. I said, what's that? I'm here at Red River Camp Meeting. Some guy I've never seen him in my life. He said, is state line with the conference? I said, yes. The conference that you preached this? Yes. And they support us. And so, you know, and I just thank God um, for their support because I tell you, not every, church, not every conference is corrupt. Amen. Not every leader is corrupt. Amen. You got good people in the conference. Amen. All right. Ellen G. White worked for the conference, all right? People don't forget, forget that part, but um, let me get off of that because that's a whole other story right there. <laughs> you believe in the spirit of prophecy, right? I'm, uh, you know what? I'm going to read your statement. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't going to get into this, but I'm going to just get, it, get into it right now. Somebody, you're you're going to have to show somebody this uh, when you get back, all right? There is a statement in the spirit of prophecy. It's one of the most bombshell quotes that I've ever seen in my life. And if I told it to you, you would want to know where in the world is it at, you know. And, um, and I'm so glad to work in the organized work um, because what happens is this right here, you know, you know, with so much stuff that goes on. Can we just put it on the, um, can we put it on the um, PowerPoint now, Brother uh, Dennis? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. The other way. Oh, something's wrong? Uh oh, man! Oh wow! You want to use this? Okay. You want to use that instead? Okay, I think I know what's going on. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes, and so it's been wonderful working in the denominational work, and you know, and God needs people within denominational circles. Am I right, somebody? Amen. How many of you go to a conference church? Most of you there. And wouldn't it be nice to have a pastor that preaches the end time message? Amen. So what happens is I just want to be the, the, pray, the, uh, the answer to somebody's prayer. And let me tell you this right here. The State Line Seven Day Adventist Church, the Lord's been blessing us. Now, is State Line perfect? Absolutely not. But we're striving. Amen. To be all that God would have us to be. All right. Now, these are, this is some pictures right here of, of, of families who are watching us in the afternoon. This is a family in Minnesota that's watching us. And you see, so if you see 10,000 views, it doesn't mean 10,000 people are watching. It's probably double that number. Um, this is in Bermuda, where we have eight people in one house watching us. And we have another one. This is Aaron right here, me and him. Amen. Um, this is um, from, what, from this, we baptized a lady. Um, we had to do this on a Wednesday night, where this lady took her stand. She drove all the way from New Mexico. We got people driving from out of state to get baptized at State Line. And this is a family, another family watching us. This is, they're watching us in England, and where they said, quote, watching every Sabbath at 5 p.m. London time. Brother Joe and Sister Jenny, thanks. We depend upon this for real food. Have mercy. And this is a lady here watching us in the morning time. And so, you know, sometimes you have to see a face, you know what I'm saying, to the numbers. And so there's real people watching, sensible people. Look at this one lady and her daughter viewing from Maryland, uh, one guy from Canada, Another family from Florida here. And on social media, this is on TikTok. Some of you heard of TikTok. The lady said to my friend, I have watched him before. I really enjoyed the seven day Adventist considering I've been keeping the true Sabbath since I started studying scripture for myself and stopped listening to pastors at the everyday churches. I don't consider myself part of any religion, but a follower of the Father 
in the Son and Holy Ghost, and she wants to be baptized. Amen. So if she wants to be baptized into the Seventh Day Adventist Church, and we just praise God. We got Dennis Preby coming. But I got to show you something here. Now, do you believe in the spirit of prophecy? And, you know, because why are people questioning whether or not we're a conference church? And if we are, how long are you going to stay there? The conference is going to throw you out. You know, we have been freaked out and scared to death by some of these preachers. Some of you know what I'm talking about. That every time they talk about the church, it's always negative. Am I right? Out of every hundred videos, a hundred of them are negative. Nothing positive of what the church does. Am I right? Now, granted, there's stuff that's going on that's definitely evil. Am I right, somebody? And nobody's saying not to um, close your eyes to it. But a friend of mine, and I don't take credit for this, this is the only statement in the spirit of prophecy where she said this. She says, do you believe in the spirit of prophecy? Then you have to believe this. Let not the professed people of God think it a privilege to separate from conference organization. Oh, you need to take a picture of this. And where's there somebody? Where's that found? Manuscript 97, 1901. It is the only statement in the spirit of prophecy that says it. Let not the professed people of God think it a privilege to separate from conference organization. This does not mean that having a self-supporting ministry is wrong. We understand that. Do we understand that? Okay, so it's a difference between a self-supporting ministry and the other. Am I right? Somebody, right? But it says here, let not the professed people of God think it a privilege to separate from conference organization. To hear what we have now is, is that we have groups that have broken off apart from the organized body. Am I right? And have started independent churches. Do you understand this? But nowhere in the spirit of prophecy does it say to do that. And it, I know people say, what about this? What about that? Every situation may be, need to be looked upon differently. But what happens is at state line, we have decided to stay with the organized church. Amen. Because we understand the parable of the wheat and the tares where the Bible says the wheat and the tares shall grow together until the harvest. Ellen White says, where is the fold where no wolves can enter? If you can find me in Whole Wheat Church, I will leave state line tomorrow and pass to that church. Have mercy. Amen. But even Jesus in the first church he chose, he said, I chose you 12 and one of you is a devil. And Ellen White says in Signs of the Times that you will have a Judas in the church until the end of time. So we can't escape it. Do you understand this right here? But it says, let not the professed people of God think it a privilege to separate from conference organization that they may show their supposed efficiency. This is entirely opposed to whose order? So you heard the book called The Broken Blueprint? Well, guess what? The blueprint's being broken here by these independent churches. Am I right, brother? Then it says, there is need of perfect unity and love and this will appear when we learn of who? Jesus. Then she says, it is whose plan? So hold on. We talk about God's plan for health. Am I right? Am I right? And let me tell you this right here. If somebody is sick, you know what you'll ask them as a medical missionary? What laws have you broken, right? Well, guess what? It is the plan of God that how many churches? Every seven day of any church and every what? Conference. Uh-oh shall cherish the feeling of reciprocal dependence. Let me ask you this. We ain't got a name. We don't got to put no names. There, there was no, okay. Name me an independent church that's in harmony with this council right here. Are they in harmony with this council? Okay, come on, it's quiet in here. Are they in harmony with this council? No. So what happens is, if these churches that are decided to be independent from the conference, we're told that every church and every conference should have a feeling of reciprocal dependence. And if they're not, they're not following the blueprint. They are not following God's plan. So if they're not following God's plan, what should they do? Repent. What does repentance look like? Turn away. Okay, what happens is this right here. I know this is this, this. And you know that people, this caused a stir on social media. I've been attacked left and right, okay, <laughs> because of that. But I didn't write this. LNG White wrote it, right? If you're going to believe Ellen White in counsels and dies and foods, you got to believe her when she says this too. Am I right? So what happens is, and we're not knocking anybody because I knew a church back in 2013, they got illegally disfellowshipped and they were independent and they invited me to come down. And they said, you know, we got all this tithe, we got all these baptisms we have here. Can you help us? I said, let me tell you, I'm going to call this other brother from the other conference. And you know what happened two years later? They were brought back into the sisterhood of churches and they, keep, and they preach present truth. 
Stop believing these people thinking that, no, that you can't preach present truth unless you outside the conference. You understand this? Here? That's a lie from hell. I'm all right, somebody. All right. And, but what does Sister White say? She said in Testimonies, Volume 5, 187, to find a weak church and help build it back up. Does that make a lot of sense? So as we leave here, you can go to your church that's weak, and guess what? You can help be a witness, and maybe they'll ask you to be the Sabbath school teacher. And then they say, man, you teach us so good. Can you give us an afternoon Bible study? Mm-hmm. I remember Moses Mason was alive. Um, I heard that when he was at New Life um, teaching Sabbath school, I heard 300 people would leave their churches to come to Sabbath school, and then after Sabbath school, they'd go back to their regular church. And then I mean, somebody may ask you to be an elder, my brother, to where you can be the head elder, amen? And then if everything goes good, the conference said, you know what, you're doing so good, can you just be the lay pastor? And then, you know what, we're just going to make you the pastor, amen? So guess what? If the Jesuits can infiltrate, why can't we infiltrate? <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. They don't care. We're going to try to bring it down. We're trying to bring this thing back up. She says, it is the plan of who? That every church and every what? Don't look at me as no compromise because I read this. Shall cherish the feeling of reciprocal dependence. We are to build one another up in the most holy what? See, and God, I wasn't even going to talk about this, but the Lord had me to talk about it. Seeking the impartation of the Holy Spirit that light may be reflected in clear, bright rays. Shall the sacred chain of dependence between who? Every church and every what? Which binds men together be looked upon as slavery? Doesn't that sound familiar? That doesn't that sound familiar, right? We ain't under no man's control, right? Shall we allow the who? The enemy to enter to cause discord and, and what? To rob families of happiness and the church of what? A lot of seven day Adventist churches, a lot of churches are being robbed of people who know the truth, amen, who can go into there, as Ellen White says, and bring the breath of life back to these churches. A lot of seven-day Adventist conferences are being robbed of people who could be a pastor. Do you understand this right here? A lot of seven-day Adventist theological institutions are being robbed of good theologians. Do you understand this right here? And that's why I'm at Oakwood, trying to make a difference in some, at least one student. Do you understand this? Remember last year or year before last, you know, I talked about jewelry in the class and how it's a sin to wear jewelry. Amen. And a student came to me. She had big hoop earrings. And I have students in my class come with it. I don't say anything because I understand all that kind of stuff. You know, if I tell them to do it, they see their teachers wearing it and stuff like that. So I just help the women to Jesus first and then they can do it. Brother James, let me tell you what happened. She came to me. And she said, Pastor, can I ask you a question? Is it wrong to wear jewelry? Can you show me the Bible? I showed it to her in the Bible. She said, you know, my father didn't want me coming to Oakwood wearing skimpy clothes. Praise God for fathers like that. Amen. But when you come into an environment where you see everybody wearing the jewelry, then people kind of conform to it. Then she said to me, you know, the reason why I wear jewelry is because my youth pastor told me it was okay to wear it. And she said, what if I don't worship the jewelry? Because that's, that's another argument, right? I told her, I said, if God told you not to do something and you do it, you are worshiping it. I mean, God gave that to me on the spot. You know, I didn't think that thing through. Do you know she stopped wearing jewelry because of that? Then one time I was talking about it in class and I felt the spirit of unbelief in that room. I felt the devil up and I said, I'm like, why am I? I was like, you know what? I said after class, I'm not teaching this no more. I said that. I said, I'm not teaching this no more. Student texted me and said, can you show me those scriptures again about jewelry? I just texted to him, didn't pay attention to it. Five minutes later, he said, you know what? I'm going to take my earrings off now. God said, don't you stop teaching that, even if one person, do you understand this right here? So what happens is somebody, now we need self-supporting ministers and self-supporting ministries, am I right? Amen, we do need that, but we need some folk in the conference churches and in working in these conferences that's going to make a difference, do you understand this? And do not judge the SDA church by the NAD and Europe and Australia. It's more than just those three divisions. You go to Africa, who's, who's African in here? Okay, I'm talking about you, you from Africa. All right. You go to Africa. Now, Africa got its issues, but let me tell you this right here. If you went to Africa, it'll feel, it'll, you'll feel like you had Red River. Am I right? Because they believe in the truth there. I remember when I went to um, Nigeria back in 2002, people saying, well, with a name like Olatunji, how come you don't sound like you're from Africa? Because I was born in New York. <laughs> 
and raised in D.C., all right? And my mother was not African. She was from Honduras. So that's why me and the Jameses are related. But watch this right here. I went to Nigeria. I'm like, these people believe in present truth over here. I'm like, man. And the cop and, and the union president got up talking about how he baptized 700 people in the crusade, a union president doing evangelism. And then watch this right here. This is really going to fasten your seatbelt. The president of the West Nigeria Conference said, we ban drums in our church. I said, y'all ban it? I said, why? He said, because what Sister White said in Selected Messages about the bell and the noise. I said, oh, really? They'll call you a fanatic in America. I said, what about women's ordination? He said, it will never happen over here. He said it just like that. I said, no. But the women's ministry department, you know what they do in women's ministry department over there? They evangelize and they win souls. Brothers and sisters, God had to give me a wake up call and say, you can't judge my church by North American standards. I got people all over the globe who love me. Do you understand this? So this is why this is so important. So shall we allow the devil to use us to prevent the great and blessed work of reformation? Because reformation needed in our churches. Am I right? Who can say it is well with my soul while evil thinking and evil speaking are allowed to rule in the heart, causing disunion and what? Strife. A lot of what's called straight testimony is nothing more than evil speaking. Can I say that one more time? A lot of what you will see, because why are we putting the sins of the church consistently before the world? Because what's going to happen is, what if a non Adventist looking at it say, well, I, I don't want to be an Adventist. There's too much corruption going on in there. Do you understand this right here? Now, does that mean that we should not rebuke sin? No, but what happens is we got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a what? A dove. So if anybody, somebody needed to read this, if one person needed to read this, let's go back. Let's go back. It is whose plan? So if it's God's plan, that means that we need to do it, right? That every church and every conference shall cherish the feeling of reciprocal dependence. I went to Heartland College, self-supporting school. Praise God. It needs to stay self-supporting. But what happened was Elder Colin Standers never told us to separate from the church. Do you understand this right here? And then what's happening is you get into all these debates and what is the church? What is this? The seventh day of the church is comprised of conferences. Do you understand this? Ordained by God. Do you understand? And she says that every church has a voice in selecting those of the local conference, union, division, and the GC. What voice does an independent church have in voting anybody in office other than themselves? None, brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, Sister White says that the same man shouldn't be over the same district year after year. How long can an independent pastor be over a church? Forever. As much as I love state line one day, I'm going to have to transfer. Do you understand this right here? So what happens is, am I right, brother? So what happens is a blueprint and there's a part, there's a gap in this whole thing that people have forgot to tell people. And when you teach it, then they want to come on you for teaching it. And then but here's what's so deep about it is how they gaslight people. You know what the word gaslight is? They will make you think that that statement didn't mean what it said. That's what it is. It's called manipulation. That's what it's called. <laughs> You've heard of NLP, right? Well, let me tell you this. Next to NLP is gaslighting. When somebody will try to tell you that what you just read in the spirit of prophecy does not mean what it says. Do you understand this right here? And if she says we're not to separate, that means, brothers and sisters, as much as I can have freedom in having an independent church on the conference, I would never do it. Because once you do that, you become an offshoot. I got a riddle for you. Can I give you a riddle? Can I give you a riddle? I mean, Samson gave a riddle, so I can give a riddle, right? A stomach without a body. What is it? A stomach without a body. An offshoot, SDA. That's what it is. If you separate a body organ from the body, it's an offshoot, right? It can survive for a time, but eventually it's going to what? Die out. And then Sister White said in Testimonies, Volume 8, 161, that when you do that, your movement would be broken into pieces. Eventually, it will fizzle out. That's just the way it is. That's why she said that those who heed this false message and try to leaven others will be deceived, and they will receive advanced illusions and will come to naught. You understand this right here. Now, does this mean sit under an apostate pastor? Absolutely not. Does that mean, because what happens is, if you find a church that don't want to do right, what do you do? You go find something somewhere else. Am I right? Am I right, somebody? And thanks to social media, now you can just, you can go to church on this, am I right? Pay your tithe and offering, am I right? 
We even have virtual members at Stateline, people joining us virtually now. So what happens is this, there's ways around it, but if you have any other questions about it, you can ask me later, all right? Look what's going on right now. Do you see this? What's wrong with this picture right here? What do you see in this? What's wrong with this picture? Everything. You see the president of the United States who happens to be a Roman Catholic. Am I right? Shaking hands with the head of the Roman Catholic Church. Am I right? Who happens to be his pastor? Do you understand this right here? Which means who's going to have the influence on world affairs? It's going to be the Pope. Am I right? And guess what? Joe Biden wants to work with him. But I'm here to let you know that Sunday worship is a what, somebody? Dece- is it a deception? Is it a deception? You know why? Because it's not the Sabbath, amen? And it will become the mark of the what, somebody? The mark of the beast. Now, where are we living at? We know what's coming next. We know that a national Sunday what? Law is about to be enforced, which will bring the whole world into congruence with who? The beast power. Am I right? And that's why this program is called the Sunday Law Update for you to do what, somebody? Wake up. Amen. How many of you watch the Sunday Law Update at Stateline every Sabbath online? People all over the world are watching this. And yet, and I praise God for some of these self-supporting ministries that are calling attention to them. I may not agree with them on some things, but let me tell you this. I thank God that somebody's getting out. Somebody has to tell what's going on in the last days. Do you agree with this? But yet you got some people that tell you, we don't need need to preach this. You believe that there's seven days. You got, I'm not talking about nominal ad. You got present truth folk who teach we shouldn't be teaching this. Do you understand this right here? Huh? If there's a rapist running around, you want to know who it is. Am I right? If I know who the rapist is walking around here and I say, well, I ain't going to tell nobody because nobody wants to hear it. You want to hear it. Am I right? Am I right? So what happens is this. We see the Pope going around the globe like a God telling the whole world it's time to come together. And yet SDA is supposed to keep their mouth shut. Look at this right here. All this right here. The earth needs a green Sabbath. Bring back the blue laws. Give us back Sunday. The United Nations Environmental Sabbath Service. That don't mean anything? That means a lot. Am I right? I get hot behind this. But, and we know what's going to happen. In the last days, it's going to be those that keep the commandments of God and thank God for Ellen G. White. Amen. We ain't ashamed. We don't worship her. We worship the God that gave her the visions. Am I right, somebody? She's the prophet of God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If, because this is keeping real. In the last days. Oh, let me just say this to you. Whether you like it or not, this is the true church. Adventist church is the, sep- the seventh Adventist church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy. How many of you believe that? If, you did, if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't be preaching this. Or you're going to follow the Pope in the last days. And our message says, come out of her who? My people. Do you understand this right here? You got to come out of Babylon. And guess what? People need to come out of Babylon right now. Stuff, too much stuff is going on. I got some stuff that's going to really shock you. You, you want to get shocked today? And because somebody said, yes, they want to get shocked. Okay. But look at this right here. Look at this. Biden and the Pope Francis could make a climate change miracle. You see that? And didn't Ellen G. White talk about the weather being an issue in the last days? Didn't she talk about that? Didn't she talk about that? It says how the new U.S. leader and the liberal pontiff, like presidents and popes before them, can cooperate to transform U.S. what? Politics. And we don't need a Sunday law update. And you got articles like this coming out every week. Let me tell you this. I lie to you not. I get articles every single week. Just when I think, oh, nothing's going to come out, by Friday, somebody sends me something. Well, I just stumble into stuff. God said you better tell the people because Ezekiel says we're to be watched. And what's the watchman supposed to do? Watch. If a watchman had no eyes, he couldn't be a watchman, right? <laughs> and not only is he the watchman, when he sees the sword come, what is he supposed to do? I'm supposed to sound what, somebody? An alarm. Am I right? You know, some of you live in the country, right? And what do you hear in the morning sometimes, depending upon where you are? cock a doodle doo Does he say it in the morning or does he say it in the evening? He's supposed to say it in the morning. That lets you know it's time for you to get up. Am I right, right? 
What would a rooster, would a rooster be a rooster if he didn't crow? So a seven-day Adventist pastor cannot really be a seven-day Adventist pastor unless he gives the trumpet a what kind of sound? But watch this, y'all. Watch this. World leaders pledge for a what kind of reset? What does that sound like? Doesn't that sound like everybody coming together under one head? Huh? After, after the what? Pandemic. I'm hot now. Watch this right here. This is from the Jesuit magazine. Uh-oh. I mean, it's a Jesuit, brothers and sisters. I listen. What is Pope Francis and the Vatican doing to fight climate change? Did you see that? Wow. Before the second ever Catholic president set foot even in the White House, he, who is he? Thank you. Gave Pope Francis his word, promising that he would work with the leader of the global church to address the crisis of climate change. That tells you, and I'm going I'm to say this to you, I know that, well, I think because we believe in present truth, you understand, what did Ellen G. White say about voting these people in office? What did she say? To, to, did she say to do it? Not to do what? Not to do it, right? Why? Because we'll be partaker of whatever they push, right? And all these seven-day Adventists, and if you, you know, Sister White says, leave your voting to yourself, am I right? But anyway, let me get off of that. All these SDAs voted for a Catholic president. If there was any reason why, I would have never, I didn't vote for nobody. But let me tell you, this: the only reason why I would have never voted for him, even if I hated Trump, was because he was a Catholic. Do you understand this right here? Because of what I know. Do you understand this right here? Not what I know, what I read in the spirit of prophecy. And look at this right here. It says here, and this is written by a Jesuit priest. Look what it says here at the bottom. The Biden administration will find a willing partner in the fight against climate change in Rome. Have mercy. I mean, do you believe that we're living in the end of time right now? Look what's going on. Since the climate shut down, all we got now is these Sunday lockdowns. Somebody say Sunday lockdowns. They lock it down on Sunday in a country called Barbados. Anybody Beijing up in here? It may be a Beijing up in here. It says from March 1st, supermarkets will open on Mondays to Saturdays, but not on Sundays. Why are they locking down one day a week to fight a virus that goes on seven days a week? You think that thing through. It's all over the world. I can show you articles. I got even a video of the Philippines where they were closed on Sunday and it looked like it was the Sabbath there. You for the Philippines? Yeah. Oh, and the Philippine president said, if you don't get that jab, we're going to put you in jail. Boy, I tell you, it's getting crazy, y'all. Do you understand this? Therefore, it's time to leave the cities and move into the way of somebody. Now, let me ask you a question. Should, should the pastor lead by example? Am I, shouldn't the pastor lead by example? Well, let me tell you this. I'll be 50 years old in October, and I hate to say 50, but the bottom line is it took me 49 years, except for those two, three years at Heartland, it took me 49 years to get out of the city. Well, first 18, I was in the world, so I didn't know no better. But let me tell you this right here. So in January, thanks to my wife, we moved into the country. This is the easement. This is our property. This is our house. Now, we're not bragging now. We're not bragging, okay? But I had to show you this to let you know I'm trying to live the life. Do you understand this right here? What does Sister White say? Get out of the city to move into a rural area to where your children can play. Am I right? At our old place in the suburbs, if the kids walk out the house, I'd be kind of scared. Like, hold on now. Don't you go too far from that house, right? Or I'll be right out there making sure I can see. Why? Because I don't want nobody kidnapping my child. But now they can go out and play and have a good time. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. But we know what's going to happen. Testimonies to the church, volume four says that Protestantism shall stretch their hands across the abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power. Am I right? They shall stretch their hands across the gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism. Am I right? And then the Sunday law will be enforced. Am I right? And look what's going on. It has to be soon because you know what the Pope is talking about? He's talking about global solidarity. What does the word solidarity imply? Unity. And he says here, we need a universal solidarity. And brothers and sisters, this is the reason why Ellen White says, let the watchmen now lift up their what? Voice. And give the message, which is present truth for this time. Let us show the people where we are, where? So what should every seven day Adventist pastor conference or self-supporting do? What should we do based on this statement? It's quiet in here. We're supposed to give the, we're supposed to show people where we are in prophetic history. 
So therefore, the spirit of prophecy says, she says, quote, the light that we have upon the third angel's message is the what light, somebody? True light. Then she says, the mark of the beast. Let me remind you, what is the mark of the beast? Are you sure? It's enforced Sunday worship. Amen? But you're right. Not any other day other than the Sabbath, okay? We can't be denying that Sunday worship is the mark of the beast. You understand this right here? It says, all in regard to this matter is not yet what? Understood, nor will it be understood until the unrolling of the what? So this is the part that is so interesting. She says that it won't be understood in its entirety until we see the scroll unroll. What does that mean, the scroll unrolling? What does that imply? Uh, say what? Passage of time. And brothers and sisters, this pope could be the pope that it comes under. It could be, could be the next one. But brothers and sisters, can we agree, for those of us who are students of prophecy, that this pope has pushed the button, pushed the envelope a little bit more faster, a little bit more closer? This is why we got to be very careful about what's going on. Ellen White says, the Roman, this is from Great Controversy. You heard of that book before, right? The Roman Catholic Church, with all its ramifications throughout the globe, forms one vast organization and under the control and designed to serve the interests of the papal who? See, it's millions of communicants in how many countries, which includes our country, on the globe, are instructed to hold themselves as bound in allegiance to the who? Pope. Let me ask you this. So who is Joe Biden in allegiance to? The Pope. Why? Because God told us that. Am I right? And then recently, some of you heard that a famous, a very popular SDA theologian said that the great controversy, which is a book for her times, that it has no relevance today and stuff like that. I tell you, boy, it's going to be a shaking, y'all. Whatever their nationality or their government, they are to regard the authority of the Catholic Church as above all other. Do you hear that? Though they may take the oath of pledging their loyalty to the state, yet back of this lies the vow of obedience to who? Rome. Absolving her from every pledge inimical to her interests. So who is the president of the United States bound to obey? Or the, with the Constitution or the Pope? The Constitution's Protestant, am I right? It is Protestant in nature. The First Amendment is Protestant. So therefore, really, a Roman Catholic president really can't completely agree with the Constitution. Am I right, somebody? The majority of Supreme Court, is it Catholic or is it Protestant? Matter of fact, there are no more Protestants on the Supreme Court. There's nothing standing in the way of a Sunday law not to be enforced. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says in Revelation 13 that the whole world's going to wander after the who? But in Revelation 13, it tells us that the second beast will come up out of the earth, true or false, and then cause the whole earth to worship the first beast. Am I right, somebody? So this is going to happen when Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. Am I right? So therefore, we're going to have to choose between the seal of God and the mark of the what, somebody? The beast. So what happens is this. This Sunday law update is just waking you up to let you know that we're about to hit the final crisis, the final test of this earth's history. You got a napkin or a towel? I need it from me. I'm sweating. This is serious. Now, I'm going to read you something from the Spirit of Prophecy that you may have never read. Watch this right here. 1888 Materials, page 477, the Spirit of Prophecy says that the mark of the beast is to be presented in somewhat shape to every institution and every what? Individual. Now, when you read that, what does that sound like to you? What does that sound like to you? It's going to come in different forms. It's all going to be Sunday worship, but Sunday worship is going to come. It's going to be religious, am I right? But guess what? It's going to hit the atheists. It's going to hit the environmentalists. It's going to hit everybody in different forms. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And you know, now, what do I have in my hand? Cell phone. What kind do you think this is? No, not an Android. Come on. Nah. You must have an Android, right? Let me tell you. I know. I mean, not offending nobody. But I'm going to tell you this. Once you get an Apple, in my opinion, once you get a Mac, you won't go back. It is true. Now, whether you have it, as long as it works, okay? But let me tell you this. Do you know that last year they admitted that all of our phones have been tapped? You know that, right? 
Everything's been recorded. You understand this right here? Not only do they know who you are, they know where you are. And haven't you seen, and you know how I know that? Because if you lose your iPhone, all you got to do is go to iCloud. Have you heard of iCloud? You can go to your computer. And let me tell you this right here. One Sabbath at State Line, thank you very much. One Sabbath at State Line, I had let, um, lost my computer. And so what happened was, Brother Dennis was in the, um, the, Brother Dennis was in the back. We were, oh, something fell? Yes, yeah, just, uh, yeah, what? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, we, oh this is, what is this called? We're not watering nothing down today, amen? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't watering nothing down. Watch this right here. I lie to you not. I was able to go on iCloud, and I saw where my phone was at, uh, my, my computer was at, and I dr- followed it all the way to a member's house. Have mercy. Somebody put my bag in the, in the car, by, their car by accident. So if I know where they at, where it's at, then guess who knows where I'm at? And I got some news for you, and, I, and don't, don't be scared for me. I'm, I'm going to show you some news, but don't be scared. But brothers and sisters, they got this stuff right now, and all these apps for the um, vaccine, you know about that, right? They got these apps. Look, look. if they can do that, they can have a Sunday Law app. Worship alert. All citizens report to church. They can have that. Do you is this possible? Yeah. Yes, it's possible. So what happens is this right here. Um, and guess what? Does anybody have a flip phone? Maybe one person out of a million has a flip phone, but everybody, even children, have a smartphone. Have mercy. This world's coming to an end. Oh, look what they're talking about. So can we, can we get into the update? Can I show you what's getting ready to happen? Oh, what's going on right now? Let's go on. Let's look at this right here. Um, a couple of weeks ago, they had a G7 meeting. And we're not going to go into all the articles, but I'm just going to show you some high points. This article says, as the G7 summit begins, it says, quote, it says the world needs what kind of Sundays? Climate Sundays and wild Christians more than ever. Climate Sundays, you know what that's talking about? Having a day off where we can rest for the climate. Have mercy. But you think, you think that's bad? And I'm going to come back to this later on, but guess what I found out? I've had several people on Facebook share this with me this week. Do you know that Facebook now, and we're going to have the panel come up Soon, we're going to talk about this. Are you concerned that someone you know is becoming an extremist? They, they'll report now. They're telling you you can report on people who you think is putting extreme material on Facebook. What do you think about this? How many of you saw this on Facebook this week? Some of somebody did. Maybe you did. Some of you, a few of you have seen it. But this is slowly going around. We're going to get to the article in a minute. And look at this right here. It says, your Facebook brick brother would now like to know if you'll snitch on any far-right extremist. This is from CBN News. And I'm going to read to you an article that was put out last week or week before last. Oh, it's going to let you know that this thing is here. But let me tell you what concerns me the most. And don't be scared for my life, okay? A friend of mine typed up a website called truthfinder.com. And type my name. That's me. The only one, okay? They did spell my first name wrong, but let me tell you this right here. Government watch list noticed. It says, the federal government maintains a list of names of people who may be associated with a known suspect or a known suspect themselves. (laughs) I wonder why, right? It says, or under reasonable suspicion of involvement in an extremist group or terroristic activity. Woo! And guess whose name is it under? Will you invite me back next year, Mother? <laughs> and I'm not somebody say praise the Lord, right? We should leap for joy, right? Right? I should I should wear a bulletproof vest, right? <laughs> right? Should I wear a bulletproof vest now? No, man. God's got me. But let me tell you this right here. Somebody said this to me just this week. Brother Nolan, what's, what do you think about this, man? Yeah, that your, your guest speaker is on some possible, possible government watch list? Oh, man. So what should I do from this point on? Keep preaching. But let me ask you this. Were they watching Jesus? Everywhere he went. Am I right? They were watching him, right? Was Jesus scared? Therefore, I can't be scared. Brothers and sisters, this is truly God letting us know that the Sunday law must be on the way. But I could not do this program today without having a panel discussion about this. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to invite our panel discussion. We have, we call it the Sunday Law Panel with Narlin Edwards, amen, so give my hearty amen, Elder Marcus Mason, and Elder Elvin Bridges, amen. Can y'all just bring your chairs right here in the front, because we got to talk about this, brothers. And we do this at State Line, so you, you, know, you know how the panel goes. We just show you articles, and then we just comment about it. But look what's going on, man. I mean, they're talking about, look at this article right here. We should follow the post lead on the what? Environment. They're talking about a Green New Deal, all these things. And where is this leading to? It's leading to the fulfillment of Revelation 17. What does the Bible say? And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive power as kings for one hour with the who, somebody? The beast. The whole world is going to come together with Rome. These have what kind of mind? One mind. And shall give their power and their strength unto the beast. So we see that, as Ellen White says, the agencies of evil are combining their forces and are what, somebody? Consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Then she says that great changes shall soon take place in our world. Let me ask you this, are the great changes taking place right now? Yes. Let me ask you this, how many believe that things are going to go back to the same as it was before COVID? How many really believe it's going to go back to the same? No, well, nobody believes that. I don't even believe it. But let me tell you this, how many believe that something is going to come out from this? We all know what's coming out. And God is letting the scroll unroll and guess who is the one that the people are looking for to save the world out of this? Known as the P-O-P-E. The Pope. As a superman to save the world. And look at this article. To where he has a plan to heal the world's broken economy. To where he's preaching before the world and you have Rick Warren Protestants sitting at his feet salivating behind what he says. Have mercy. But what does the Bible say? The Bible identifies the papacy as the king of the what, somebody? The north. And at state line this month, we're going to be doing a series on Daniel 11, the last six verses, to show you how this thing's getting ready to come down. Now, watch this right here. I'm not going to get into it today, but let me tell you this. The Lord is showing us that this world's history is getting ready to close. And right now, we're going to ask um, our panel, any one of y'all could talk, based upon what you just saw, how close are we? Come on now. I got a lot of articles to show. It's going to be a tour de force today. Watch this right here. <laughs> Very close. Very close. That's all you got to say? Extremely close. Extremely close? It is closer than we can really imagine. Mercy. Mercy. Listen to this right here. I got to show you this right here. I got so much to show you right here. You ready to see this, everybody? All right. We're going to get to this in just a second. Now, before we do this right here, I got to show you this right here. Now, our message is a very serious message. And look what it says here. This is from USA Today. Have you heard of USA Today? I remember when USA Today first came out back in the 80s. But let me tell you this. Look what it says. It says here, you see this article? It says, is your friend a what? Now, did it give any definition? Did it give any parameters of what an extremist is? Did it give it? So what happens is it says we can't look at this and say, are they just talking about domestic terrorists? Sister White says that when we get to the point that God will have us to reach, the world will regard us as extremists. Am I right? So it says, is your friend an extremist? What did Jesus say in Matthew 24? That your family and your friends are going to turn you in. Even with this COVID crisis, it has created a snitch culture to where even the mayor of L.A. said that snitches don't get snitches, stitches, snitches get rewarded. Thank you for turning people in. So we're living in a snitch culture. It says, is your friend an extremist? Facebook is asking some users about exposure to what, somebody? Content. That means that you could be termed an extremist, and this thing is so subjective. It's not objective. It says, Facebook is asking some U.S. user weathers whether they have been exposed to extremist content or if they're worried that someone they know might be becoming a what? An extremist! What do you think about this panel? What do you think about that? Just, just, we don't even need to read the rest of the article, but what do you think about that? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is um, our, our days on social media are numbered. Yep. And when we say that whatever we're going to do, we must do quickly, mm -hmm. then this, these kind of articles are beginning to show that just because it's not front page news, does not mean that Satan is not working behind the scenes, as the prophet said, basically circling the wackens around God's people, 
while they're not paying attention. Right. And so the idea is that we need to be awake, like it says in Romans, it's high time to awake out of what? Sleep. Sleep. Because our salvation is what? Nearer. Nearer. And so these, these articles, these news events show us that the thing that we've talked about for so long is not only still going, but very, very fast. Let me ask you this right here. Can this apply to Seven Day Adventists? Yes. No, it will apply to Seven Day Adventists. Look what it says. The social network said that the queries are part of its test as its redirect initiative, which intends to combat violent extremism, the company confirmed on Thursday. It says we are partnering with NGOs, non-governmental organizations, I wonder who they are, and academic experts. Ellen White says that men of the highest minds will come into contact with truth. Am I right? It says, in this space and hope to have more to share in the future. A Facebook spokesman said in the email statement, the test comes as the world's largest social media network continues to face intense scrutiny from critics because, you know, Donald Trump inside of that, rock, that, that thing on January 6th. So what they're saying is, is that if language can incite violence and kind of extremism, then we got to cover it all. But watch this right here, y'all. That's what they said on Facebook. But look what I found two weeks ago. Look what it says right here. Bree Bart magazine says that the Biden administration asks Americans to report potentially radicalized friends and family. Let me ask you a Go question, ahead. brother. Now, Go can ahead. we measure the barometer of where we are prophetically based on the position of the church on these issues? Break it down. Well, I mentioned to you a letter, a document. How many of you have seen or heard about a document that came out very recently from the Southern Philippine Union Conference? Anybody familiar with that? I'm going to read it to you. I want you to give me your opinion. It says... Excerpt from the South Philippine Union Conference Executive Committee Minutes. Now we know what minutes are, right? Documentation based on everything that was discussed during that particular meeting. It says, let me enlarge it so I can see it. The following is an excerpt of the, from the Executive Committee meeting of the South Philippine Union Conference Executive Committee, South Philippine Union Conference, et cetera, et cetera. March 20th, 2021, so just a couple of months ago. Whereas COVID-19 pandemic has wreaked havoc in all facets of life, literally, and whereas health experts all over the world endorse vaccine against COVID-19 virus as one of the best remedies available to protect ourselves, our families, and others from possible contamination, and whereas our church, after much prayer and study, has established a position to adopt the opinion of the health experts. Mm. Did you get that? Together with the reliable facts from our church history that even Mrs. White got vaccinated during her lifetime, thus vaccination is safe and acceptable. And whereas, despite, don't, please don't, don't crucify the, the preacher. I'm just Read. reading what I'm seeing. Whereas, despite the stri I'm sorry. The strong stance of the church and her encouragement to church members to cooperate with the government. Did you catch that? Yeah. To cooperate with the government along this line while respects anyone's choice whether to get vaccinated or not. Many of our church members continue to spread wrong theories and information, stating, among others, that vaccine is closely related to 666 in Revelation 13 and from one church to another give lectures to our members, wherefore it was to enjoin our church within SPUC territory to deny anyone the pulpit if his intention is to give information contrary to the position of our church, which mm -hmm. favors the administration of vaccine against COVID-19. Further, to call the attention of those members who have different opinions from counseling for counseling and to deal with them using the Bible, the spirit of prophecy and the church manual. So you see what's going on. So what's going on is we see what's going on. This is going on in the church. So what happens is this right here. It's asking who Americans, this is Adventist or not. Do you understand this to report radicalized friends and family? Now I got to show you this right here. 
President Joe Biden's administration announced their plans to create ways for who? Americans to report radicalized friends and family to the government in an effort to fight domestic what? Now, let me ask you a question. It says terrorism, right? Let me ask you this right here. How would you feel if I told you that speaking against the Pope is considered terrorism? I'm going to come back to this article. Fasten your seatbelt. The Vatican calls verbal attack on the Pope terrorism. It's over. It's over. You can kiss this world goodbye. It's over. Because the second angel's message says Babylon is what? Come out of her, my what? The third angel's message says, don't receive the mark of the what? Beast, which is the papacy. Am I right, somebody? So two of the three messages center around Rome. Am I right? And the Vatican says that any verbal attack, this is 2007, but bottom line is they say they never change, right? So I don't think they changed their opinion, right? Ver Vatican calls verbal attack on the Pope what? This is a real article. The Vatican's official newspaper accused a comedian. Now, what is a comedian's job to do? To tell what? Jokes. Do you take a comedian seriously? No. But because he was joking about the Pope, it says for inciting on for, of terrorism for criticizing the Pope and warned that its rhetoric could fuel a return to 1970 style. What kind of violence? It's the exact violence that what happened on January the 6th. Brothers and sisters, we're told that the work that we have failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity, we're going to have to do under most terrible crisis. What? I don't know about you, but this sound, this right here, sounds like an extension of what you just read. And if Facebook's getting involved and stuff like that, do you know that my, my original page on Facebook's been shut down since November? It's still up, but I just can't get into it. Because I put some video up, woke up at 1 o'clock in the morning, and guess what? They said, your page is down. You got unwanted content. Please, I gave them all my information. They said, because of COVID, you're going to have to wait till we get back to you. It's been November, and it's now July. I had to put a second page up. Do you understand this right here? And they're taking stuff down off of social media, but I thought that the First Amendment gave us freedom of what? And also freedom of the press. Do you understand this? My brothers, what do you want to say about what you just saw right here in relation to the First Amendment for freedom of speech and freedom of the press? What you want to say, brother? Go ahead. One of you, any one of y'all. As I'm gathering everything that you're mentioning, um, you know, and I'm looking at the garden, you know, we're, we're using equipment and tractors now because we... I can't say the seven years of plenty, but we're in a time that we could use them now. We do realize that there's a time that we're not going to be able to use them. That's right. So as, we're looking, as I'm looking at this, you know, there's a lot of ministries that's based solely on social media. And obviously that's not going to go through, as Brother Mason just mentioned. Right. So I think one of the things that we have to look at is how can we still practically get the message out? How can mm -hmm. we still practically evangelize? without complete and total dependence on, on YouTube and social media. But That's the one of the things that comes One of the best ways is this, is to have your own website and direct people to it. That's one of the ways. Because, I mean, Alex Jones was the first person to get his stuff taken down off of all the webs, but he t channels it to his website. I don't agree with everything Alex Jones says, but what happens is this right here. If they can do it to Alex Jones, if they can ban the former president, then who are we? You understand this right here? This is serious. Now, this is where it's going to get really sticky. Let's look at this next article right here. Look what it says right here. Po this is last week. Rome reports. Who reporting this? The Pope warns against false preachers on social media. There it is right there. It's over. It's over, y'all. One more time. Pope Francis warns against false preachers. Who is he to call somebody false? <laughs> the Pope warns against false preachers on where? Social media. So Dr. Rowe, who is he yes. specifically referring to? Oh, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Who is he referring to? He 
referring to only one denomination. That's S D A. No, no. no oh, I got no, something to show no. you. Wait, wait till I show no. you this. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. Now, now this, these are the articles. Right. That should wake us up. That should wake us up. Because this, the beast power is now given a veiled threat mm -hmm. to those who have a mission to expose him. Mm -hmm. So he's really calling us out. Out. And we know that not every Seventh day Adventist is preaching the message for this time. So who is he really calling out? Certain. Present truth. Present truth. Mm. So this is a veil threat to everyone who believes and wants to promulgate the third angel's message. message. And look at this article right here. This is from five years before. Look what it says. The Pope says, don't listen to prophets of doom, the Pope says. He said on Sunday, he called for the faithful not to be driven by end time curiosities or apocalyptic preachers. Wow. Urging them to focus on what is truly important. You see, that's over, y'all. The Pope said, don't listen to the prophets of doom. Then five years later, he says, hold on, before he said that, oh, I got to show you this right here. And five years, and then, then the article says he wants to be the president of the world. What does that sound like? Doesn't that sound like Revelation 13, Brother James? Am I right? Am I, am I seeing this correctly? What do you think about this, y'all? You, you, you want me to just go to the next speaker and just stop this right here? No, we got to go on because this is some stuff here. I got to show you. This is serious. Look what it says right here. The Pope warns. This is last week. When I saw this last week, I, I ain't going to lie to you. I'll be, getting, I'll be getting happy when I see stuff like this. You know why? Because Jesus says, look up for your redemption. What? Look what it says right here. Now, it says he warns against false preachers on social media. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to play. Can I play it for you? Please, somebody say, please, watch this right here. All right, if it works. But sometimes this stuff don't be working. All right, anyway, I can just read. I can just, let me, I, I'm not going to be able to play it for you because um, it, maybe it's the connection issue. But notice what it says right here. He just gets to the bottom line. He says here, he says here, because he says here. Pope Francis says that these false preachers begin with what? Doctrine. Mm, doesn't that sound like what I heard SDA say? We need to be preaching about no doctrine. We got to preach about Jesus. Have you heard that before? All right. They begin with doctrine, then they denigrate the apostle. It is always the same way to take away the apostle's authority, which is, I think, they're talking about the Pope. The Pope says that he warns that this still happens today, especially on where? Social media. Supposed evangelizers sell themselves as protectors of the doctrine. Oh, it's going to get sticky, brother, brother Bridges. He says, how can we recognize these people? How do you know who they are? For example, one of their characteristics is rigidity. Uh-oh. Have you heard of rigidity before? In the way they preach the gospel, which they should make us feel and be faith, feel, excuse me, make us free and joyful, these people are rigid Always rigid. You have to do this and you have to do that. What does that, who does that sound like? Present truth, am I right, right? Because in Adventism, am I right? We teach you what you should and what you should not do, am I right? Oh, it's going to get sticky. You ready for it to get more sticky? Are you ready? Oh, because why is it quiet up in here? <laughs> Woo, look at this. Now, in this article, he goes a little bit more deeper. He says, quote, there is no shortage of preachers who especially in the new means of communication can disturb communities, they present themselves not primarily to announce the gospel of God who loves man and Jesus crucified and risen, but insist, hold on now, hold on, they insist as the true keepers of truth. Oh, man. Who does that sound like? It sounds like a church that says we're the Renman church, we got the truth. Am I right? Look at it says, what is the best way to be Christians? He says on June 23rd, they strongly affirm that the true Christianity is the one they adhere to. And who does that sound like? Sound like us, right? And often identified with certain forms of the past, 
remnant of her seed. And the solution to the crises of today is to go back so as not to lose the genuineness of the faith. Today, too, then is a temptation to close oneself up to the certainties acquired in past traditions. And then he talks about them being rigid. And then it says the new preachers neither know meekness nor obedience. But who is he to say when he's the man of sin? Man, let me see what he says here. Watch this. I got to read this to you right here. Oh, Lord, this is so deep. Oh, man. Now watch this right here, y'all. It is the usual method undermining the authority of the apostle, as they can see it, is an ancient practice to present oneself at times as the sole possessor of truth. Mm. The pure and the aim to be belittling the work of others, even with what? Slander. Wow. And that's exactly the way the evil one seeks to divide the Christian community today. Wow. Brothers and sisters, what does this sound like? It sounds like what Sister White says, the work which we have failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity. The book, The Great Controversy, The National Sunday Law, all these books, all these videos on present truth, telling people where we are in these last days, will be looked upon as a threat to world peace. Do you understand this? What do y'all want to say about what the Pope said about the preachers on social media? Aren't you on social media, brother? So he's talking about you, right? He's, he's talking so, about you. So what me. you want to say about him? What you want to, what, what, what you want to tell the Pope right now? <laughs> <laughs> he's wrong, right? Well, he, I'm just going to tell him he's following the word of God. He's doing what the Lord said he would do. Yeah. Uh, the, the, when, when I think of all of these things, you know, I've read these articles and we've talked. When I see these articles, this is what it brings to me. Are we ready for the event that we know is coming? That's the bottom That's line. That's the question that comes to my mind. That's the bottom line. The, the, these articles, these events, these sayings are signposts. Signposts, that's right. It, and they serve one purpose, to let you know how close we are. But once we know how close we are, then the question is, am I ready for this most important event? Not a important one of the most important events to those who understand the truth. That's what comes to mind. So the Pope is doing what, uh, the, the, what Rome is supposed to, do. supposed to do. Now the question is, is God's people doing what they should be doing? That's right. That's the question. And I believe what Brother, Matt, uh, Brother Sandoval talked about this morning in Sabbath school, um, what we heard uh, on, in justification, I mean, on Righteousness by Faith last night, these are the things that we need to take to heart. Is my heart connected with Christ? That's the bottom line. This is the bottom line. This is coming whether we're ready or not. Or not. That's These right. are signposts to let us know how close we are, and we are close. So we need to pick up the what? The pace. That's right. And be about our father's business. Brother Edwards, you're on social media, right? What you want to tell Pope Francis? <laughs> well, I'm not going to talk to Pope. I'm going to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why I say that is he didn't come out like this. You know, right. He came out, what was he doing? He was washing feet. Mm -hmm. He was uh, feeding the poor. Yep. Uh, giving money to the homeless and all that stuff. But now, all of a sudden, he's talking like this. He's talking why? like this. Why? Because what he That's did right. developed confidence in him. And now he's saying, pretty much, come and follow me. Yep. That tells us that. We should be following Christ's method. That's pretty much what he did. That's right. He used in Christ's method of vandalism. He won the confidence of the people, planting olive trees and right. you know, leading the, all the world services that has to do with climate change and everything worldwide. And then as a result, the people developed confidence in him. Yeah. So, and mingled with the people, won their confidence, and now he's saying, come follow me. So yes. that tells me that we need to be even more aggressive in medical missionary work. So that we can point people to Christ instead of the Pope drawing them to himself. That's right. Brother Bridges, what do you think about this? It's definitely time to get to the country, right? After reading that, right? It was time over 100 years ago. That's right, brother. I'm going to piggyback on Brother, brother Marcus. You can look at a million slides up here on the screen, but the bottom line is Jesus said, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, mm. and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent, John 17, 3. So the National Sunday Law can be passed tomorrow. Do we know Jesus? That's Are right. our hearts where they need to be? And I believe that's been the theme of this entire camp meeting. Are we ready? 
Uh oh. All I, with the number of emails we get, WhatsApp texts, regular text messages. It's off the ch- off the charts. Mm-hmm. Those can become a distraction. Do we know Jesus? Is is the question of the hour. That's the Don't get the sidetracked hour. by all these distractions. The videos, John Paulian's video about Sister White being outdated. We knew all these things were coming. Do you know the Lord? That's the bottom line. So, and that's deep. So, I want to share this with you. I'm, I'm going to start winding up in just a second. Who has a question? Yes, Brother James? Mike? <laughs> the question about what do the church do? Or how do they uh, preach the gospel to the world after the social medias and all mm. the... Uh, yeah. You know, everything is shut down. Mm. There's a statement that Ellen White talks about uh, servants of God with their faces lighted up, with, you know, so forth, uh, going from door to door. But I don't think that question was really. Oh, okay. Well, it's going to get out. It's, it's going to get out. We know it. Now, this is what I really believe is going to happen. Now, let me let you know Sister White says in Great Controversy in the chapter called The Time of Trouble that while Satan will seek to propose measures to stop the work, God will have his men in key positions to give arguments so that the third angel's message can do his work. And what's happening right now, the Supreme Court is taking up a case right now against these social media companies concerning free speech. So that I believe God's going to use situations like this and others to where we're going to have just a window of time to be able to preach it. But then it's all going to shut. Do you understand this right here? So I believe God has his hand on this. And look at this right here. The Pope urges Catholics and who? Which are the Protestants to continue working for unity. And what did Ellen White say in Great Controversy 578? That Roman Catholics and Protestants will unite for the exaltation of Sunday. Look at this right here. Christians together can change the world. That was the message the Pope gave on Wednesday to Catholic, Evangelical, and who somebody? Leaders gathered to this year's John 17 event encouraging on the path of unity. So what, let me just get to the bottom line right here. What he says here is talk about the retreat is part of the John 17 movement that works to foster fellowship between Catholics and who? Protestants. Orthodox evangelicals and Pentecostals. The movement's name comes from John 17, 21, which reads, Father, make them one as you and I are one. Is that what Jesus meant? To come together with the man of sin? no. What happens is Francis in the retreat in particular calls for a new path of reconciliation with Christians. And then let me just get to the bottom line right here, man. Can I get to the bottom line? Oh, oh, watch this right here. On this year's conference, Smith was struck by the diversity of those who are represented and increasingly free conversations that took place. He also recognizes the continued focus on relational what somebody? Ecumenism. Brothers and sisters, we as SDAs are not to be a part of the ecumenical movement. Do you understand this right here? Do you understand this right here? It says here that the church has a role to play because when people see that Christians can be what? United or have a sort of relational unity with one another. When they see the relational unity, we begin to fulfill the New Testament, et cetera, et cetera. And then I think he talks about it. Bottom line is this. We know where this is leading to, right? But I'm going to read you something. I'm going to close with um, a statement from the Spirit of Prophecy. But brothers and sisters, this is prophetic. But guess what, y'all? Guess what happened last week, Brother Mason? Fasten your seatbelt. Pope Francis and Secretary of State Billiken discusses climate change. Secretary of State goes all the way to the Vatican to go to the Pope to discuss climate change. Panel, what do you think he's trying to discuss? Why is he going to the Pope anyway? Huh? for 41 minutes. That's right. And look at this right here. But look at this. This is going to really blow your mind. Somebody sent this to me this morning. It says the Vatican seeks an all-out effort to combat vaccine hesitancy. Why is the Vatican getting involved in the vaccine globally? Brothers and sisters, how many of you have had relatives and friends that say, if you don't get vaccine, you can't come see me? Or if you, you know, they feel kind of antsy about you seeing them. I got family. 
I mean, I, I've been doing ancestry searches and I've been down found family. But what happens is one family member said, because of COVID, you can't come by my house. I got a relative in Maryland, and she should come and put y'all together. Cousin Rebecca, she called me every day. She's a seven. She's not an essay. That woman loves God. She's from the Johnson family. She said, cousin, I've been in my house since COVID and have not been out the house since. She has not gone outside the house. Except for when she had to go to the hospital, she said that I stayed in the house. That's unhealthy, am I right? That's how it is. And now, let's be, uh, can I just be real with you? We got a lot of flack at state line from the outside because people didn't see us wearing masks. And they were criticizing us. But listen to this. Little did you know the state of Alabama said that in churches, masks are optional because of the First Amendment of the Constitution. People were judging us based upon where they were living at. Do you understand this right here? And then there was no social distancing going on. I have to admit that. The reason why is because there's too many people coming to church. So if 300, 200 people come to state line and all we could do is pack like sardines, I tried to, 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 to overflow rooms, it still was packed. What am I supposed to say? Half y'all got to leave. Who do I choose? Which one can't receive salvation that day? Come on, man. And do you know that practically nobody got sick at state line because of COVID-19? Nobody. And we've been open for a year. You hear me? Do you understand this right here? But what's happened is there's persecution going on even among our own people where somebody lied on us as a church and said that that's the church. They don't believe in masks and they don't believe in the vaccine. It's kind of close to the truth, but ain't the truth. You understand this right here? <laughs> if you want to come to state line, I'm just saying this right now. We got 100 masks available. If you want to wear a mask, praise God, bring your mask. Amen. And we've had some members that took the vaccine. As far as I'm concerned, that's between you and God. Am I right? I have my opinion on it. I have my feeling on it. But I'm not going to put my, make my opinion yours. You understand this right here? But what's happening is there's a subtle persecution going on to where you kind of feel kind of funny now if you don't get the jab. Do you understand this? My mother-in-law and my father-in-law came visit us last week. Their pastor lives in Huntsville. Do you know that his past, that their past, that their former pastor and the wife took the vaccine and still got COVID-19? <laughs> now, I'll just say this for me. The number one reason why I don't think I should get the, the, the jab is because it don't work. It's not a cure. And we know it's not a cure, but what does what it don't work mean? What does it doesn't work mean? It don't work, right? <laughs> So why am I going to take a vaccine, in the this right here, for a, for a, it's not going to protect me? That doesn't make any sense. And then Washington Adventist University, Washington Adventist University is mandating the vaccine in the fall. So I called Human Resources and I called, because I have two friends that work there, and they told me, praise God, that you can get an exemption based on your religious beliefs. I know, I know, I know. But why did I say that? Because guess what? We got to look out for one another. Am I right, somebody? Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm about to put myself in trouble. If any of y'all that really know me, if you ever need me to write a letter of application for you to get, because I, I got people writing me right now, I'll do it for you. Oh, Lord. I got hands raised up right now. Have mercy. <laughs> but look, let me tell you this. So what happened was I wrote, I, I've, written, I've written people um, letters, because you know I'm a religious leader, and what happens is they're going to be able to get the, um, the exemption and stuff like that. We got to look out for one another. Do you understand this right here? But things are getting very tight. You, you, you got your hand raised, Doc? It, amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Brother Sandoval. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what happens is this right here. We got to look out for one another. Do you understand this right here? And we're in this thing together. And Because what's happening is, is that now, I mean, how many of y'all ever been to Cayman Islands? That's my, oh, I love, uh, you can't, if you go to some of these countries, you have to quarantine for two weeks. Am I right? And in some places, you're going to have to get vaccinated to go. So that means our, our, it could be that this may not change. Now, we can go back to Honduras without no problem, but what happens is this right here. It's getting tight. Do you understand this right here? And Ellen White says that the trials are going to thicken around us. Do you understand this? 
So the Vatican, I'm not even going to read the article right here, is seeking an all-out effort to combat vaccine hesitancy. Why is the Vatican getting involved? I mean, maybe you got some light on this right here. This is from ABC News, which means this is not no conspiracy theorist preaching. Do you understand this? Go ahead. I mean, it's a part of Hegelian dialectic. Yeah. You know, there's a problem, an artificial problem that's created based on the agenda they want to meet. Mm -hmm. Then you have the, the reaction to the people and then the artificial solution. As we've been mentioning, it doesn't work. So this tells us that it's an artificial solution, yep. which is a perfect fit for the Hegelian dialectic. So, I mean, yep. it's that simple. And then it says the Vatican Bioethics Academy and the World Medical Association on Friday call for an all-out effort to combat vaccine hesitancy. How many of you are hesitant? Now, some of you say, I ain't hesitant. I'm just not taking it, right? <laughs> I ain't take it, are you? <laughs> and I'm going to be real with you. It's, it's kind of real. You know what this reminds me of? And please don't laugh. Please don't take this the wrong way. This room, anybody ever see the documentary on Jonestown with Jim Jones where he made them people take it? It fit just like that. Yeah, I mean, people were under pressure and stuff like that. But anyway, it says to combat vaccine hesitancy and correct the myths and disinformation. According to who? People are getting the vaccine. Oh, I, let, me get on, let me get on the floor. I got I to gotta get on here. People are getting the vaccine. And let's be real. Some folk have died. Am I right, somebody? A lot of people have died. All these heart attacks, even they're putting it out there. They're not hiding anything. It could cause side effects. Why would I take anything? Why would I risk my life? Remember when Hank Aaron died? I was shocked. I said, you know, you know, I've read about him and stuff. One friend of mine said, y'all conspiracy free. He didn't die. No, no, no vaccine. And, you know, he took the vaccine two weeks before. Remember DMX, the rapper? He took the. My friend text me. I lie to you not. God is my witness. They text me the article that said the cause of death for Hank Aaron. And guess what they said? Natural causes. That was a lie right there. <laughs> That was a lie. That was a lie. That, that was a lie. I mean, he was up in robos to me. Natural causes. How do they know it's natural causes? You know what? Let me not get into this, because if I get into it, then I don't want to get your page taken down or nothing like that. I'm already on the, I'm, I'm already on the, on the government watch list, so I got to be careful. And then you start getting phone calls and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know who Dr. O is. Watch this right here. In a, in a joint statement, in a joint statement, come on, stop laughing. In a joint statement, the group said that some vaccine reluctance in poor countries is rooted in historical inequalities. I got to hit this right here because there was a thing called the Tuskegee experiment. 40 years, they injected black people with syphilis. You understand this right here? And when they went to the doctor, the, the people above them told them doctors, do not give them penicillin. Don't give them nothing. And they lied to them people. Do you understand this right here? And you think we're going to just trust anything that Dr. Fauci? Yeah. <sighs> Let me get off of that, man. You know why African Americans have a real reluctance of that? And that's not the only experiment they've done with vaccines. You understand this right here? And we just going, and it's not been FDA approved? What? And people, and you got SDA, I heard one, SDA pastor saying, if you don't get the jab, do not come to church. Oh, man. You know, I'm about to sit down, man. But they said a more pernicious form of hesitancy is being driven by fake news. I got one of my videos taken down. They said that you gave some medical misinformation. I'm like, what medical misinformation did I get? I don't know what I said. <sighs> and disinformation about vaccine safety, including among religious what? And some in the some in the what? Man, this is this now. If anything's a conspiracy, it's what they do, not what I'm saying. Am I right? Because what's happening is is this right here. We know that the love of money is the root of all what. And the thing about what's going on with all these health measures, which are good in their place, but what happened is, is you can see the mark of the beast control measures put in place right now. 
All the control men, even that Mark of the Beast attitudes that I thought I would have saw when Sunday observance was enforced, they're in place right now. And as I bring this to a close, look what's going on. I got this yesterday. I got this today. Somebody sent this to me today. I got people, there are people I know, I don't know where to be finding this stuff from because I would have never found it. Look at this, celebrating a faithful fourth. It says here, Sunday will be one of those slightly rare occasions when the Christian Sabbath and the Declaration of Independence convene, converge. I never thought about that. Ellen White says that they will, in the last days, talk about the need of keeping Sunday holy. Didn't she say that? And look what they're talking about right here. Some local, it says January 4th, July 4th, last fell on a Sunday in 2010. It won't happen again until 2027. Some local pastors say they will recognize the day and its importance to Christians, but not to the point that America's birth as a nation supplants the gospel message. If you read this right here, let me just get to the bottom line right here. It says here, uh, bottom line, he just says here how important it is to keep Sunday and stuff like that. But look at this article. It's the last article. Then I'm going to read you a statement from the Spirit of Prophecy. The Butler Eagle. Don't ask me where that Butler where. I don't know where that is. Butler, Georgia, Butler, Michigan. I don't know where it is. But notice this right here. Keep holy the what? Brother Mason, you better preach this at Apocalypse Camp Meeting next month. I know you're going to preach it, brother. July 4th, 1776, they passed um, the Declaration of Independence and all that kind of stuff. Then it says right here, I got it. Let me just finish because it says here. All right. For this reason, it seems odd that I can't say that pan's name. So we schedule a parade to honor these men on a day that these men themselves would not wish to be honored. Indeed, these men had a clear understanding that Sunday was to be set apart for the Lord and his glory and not for the glory of man. Discussions of the Sabbath and how one might ought and ought not to practice it are of a not popular discussions in churches these days, let alone in the broader secular world, we believe that it is in the poor taste of the leadership of Zenopoli to endorse an event that will tempt Christians to break God's law on that day. Wow. Have our culture and our churches grown so influenced by secularism, that's the king of the South, that the Sabbath is no longer a matter of concern among civil and church leadership, church and state. Is the worship of God's people now seen as an event to be scheduled around a more significant community event? Have we entered an era where it's acceptable that activities designed to draw the community together are deliberately scheduled in a way to draw away people from God? Oh, but let me tell you this right here. And I'm going to tell you this right here. This article says it all. Are you ready for this? Guess what they're talking about right now. Brother, Brother Bridges, look at this right here. The U.S. workforce is feeling more burnt out than ever before. And they're calling it the great national burnout. So if you're having a burnout, how do you solve a burnout? You arrest. And this is from the Business Insider. I'm not going to read this to you. This is last week. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I hear the rumblings of a Sunday law. Do you understand this? How soon? Only God knows. And I'm going to read you something here, and then I'm going to sit down. Did you enjoy this today, y'all? Now, look what Sister White said. This is some good counsel, all right? Sister White says there is to be how much compromise? No compromise with those who make void the law of God. Do we see this, elders? I'm going to let y'all say your last words before we close. It, why it is not safe? Or who are these people right here? Somebody said Jesuits, people from all denominations. Let's keep it real. Let's come together to stop the climate change. Let's come together to stop COVID and SDA say, no, we're not going to join. It is not safe to rely upon them as what? You know why? Because if you counsel with them, they're going to counsel you out of preaching the third angel's message. Our testimony is not to be less decided now than what? Formerly. Our real position, what's our real position mean? That Sunday's the mark of the beast, etc., is not to be cloaked in order to please the world's great what? Men. They may desire us to unite with them and accept their plans, and they may make propositions in regard to our own course of action, which will give the enemy an advantage over us. Brothers and sisters, it is now time to get this message out. Do you understand this? 
whatever church you go to, as Sister White said, you know, we're not to separate from these churches. You understand this, right? We're to help build them up. Do you understand this? But at the same time, we're to help them to be strong churches, and all things are possible. Amen? I mean, because some of us were, were not always the people we were. Do you understand this? But what happens is because somebody gave you the truth. Amen? Somebody gave it to me. And because of that, you are where you are. Somebody needs your influence. What we're going to do, this is the last slide, and we're going to um, let our panel say the last words. Brother James, you see that right there? You see that box right there? Can you and somebody else pass this out? We want to let you know it's time for revival and reformation. And we need to read. Do you understand this? If you're going to be a true seven-day Adventist in these last days, if you are literate, you need to learn how to read. Amen? The Bible and the spirit of prophecy. I'm giving you an advertisement. There's no prices on there. What we're doing is we're pushing the 10 volume spirit of prophecy set. It's one per family, one per family, for adults, for adults, not going to be giving the kids and stuff like that. All right. If you, if you want one, if you want to order one, what happens is you can keep this after Sabbath. You can call the ministry, not my ministry, it's another ministry, 10 volumes of the spirit of prophecy set to where all, practically almost all the original Ellen White writings published and unpublished are available in 10 volumes. Yes, almost everything. And I, is manuscript release, everything, letters, messages, pamphlets, everything. If you want one, if you want one, just raise your hand. And um, what happens is um, you can, uh, you can uh, call this ministry here. There's a number. Please do not call on the Sabbath. We're not selling nothing on the Sabbath. Amen. But what happens is there needs to be a revival. We got to get up and read these books. And while this is being passed out, panelists, any last words? Any last words? Sister White says in the book education, page 20, the system of education instituted at the beginning of the world was to be a model for man throughout all after time. Yes. And we've been given everything we need to be prepared for what's coming. There's Amen. no excuse. All we have to do is be obedient. That's right. This environment, the agriculture, we have the everything. eight laws. We have the health reform message. We have everything we need. We have the sanctuary. We know where we need to be to be That's close right. to Jesus in the most holy place by faith. That's right. Not only priest about it, but the stand of all priest about it. We know what we need to do. We need to obey. Amen. Amen. Brother Mason. Um, the, the thought that comes to my mind is replication. Go ahead. The, que the, the question was, how is this message going to get out when social media is taken away? And all of the technology that we use right now is stripped away. But if the whole idea behind sanitariums and outposts and things were to teach and to learn and to replicate the message in others, then they would then go back home to their places and replicate the message where they are. And so the prophet talks about jets of light. If more jets of light are lit all over the world, then it wouldn't matter if technology wasn't available. Right. People who knew the message would be scattered all over the planet and would be prepared to give the message in their community. So then all we need then is the latter rain. Yes, Lord. We're already educated by the Holy Spirit. We've come yes. to these places and we've studied and learned and then left to then give the message. A lot of times, God's people are looking to these centers as the place that will give the message. But we're supposed to come, learn, learn. and go back. We've had many schools of the prophets, schools of the loud cry. We're getting ready to have another school coming up. But people want to go home and rest. This is a mistake. We've got to replicate so that when nothing else is available... It's in here. It's in here. And they can't shut that down unless they take your life. Amen. And so if we do that, then it doesn't matter when technology is not available. The message will still go, go forth. Out. It's still going to go out. Go ahead. And the Bible says there's nothing hid that won't be revealed. And we always look at that as sin, but it's also in terms of truth. They may try to hide the truth and do things, that, but it's still going to get out. Go ahead. I'm going to re-echo that same point. You know, I was talking to uh, Mr. Dickman yesterday, and I was sharing with him what one of our visions here is to replicate this even on a smaller scale. Yeah. Like, we got to have these 
in every crevice and corner of the United States. Yeah. And when you have that, you don't really have to evangelize on YouTube or, you know, if you get shut down, you, you're evangelizing right here. Yeah. Now, the blessing to that is when you read in Mark 12, 12, the Bible mm -hmm. says that they sought to take, to, to pretty much slay Jesus and take his life. But the Bible says that they fear the people. Now, why do they fear the people? Because oh, yeah. Jesus was aggressively doing evangelism and they're seeing all the people that he's healed right beside him. And they're saying, if I go to try to take his life, the people is going to attack me. Now, Avondale had the same exact experience. They actually passed the Sunday law at Avondale. That's right. And because of the work that they did in the community, the officers actually came, saw them working on Sunday. And because, it literally said, because his family members have been affected and healed by the medical missionary work and the work yep. that they were doing in Avondale, the officers came and they act like they didn't see what they were doing. That's right. So what we need to do is have that kind of aggressive service locally in every crepes and corner of the United yes. States. So that every, everywhere we're going, we have these. We have an agrarian lifestyle. We live in a self-supporting lifestyle. And at the same time, we're ministering our community. So if the officers come now to arrest us, they're going to say, well, I just saw you heal my mother. I just saw that my aunt was yeah. healed. And they're going to say, well, I got to leave them alone. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I see. So we have to be strategic from this point on. This is about being strategic. And I want to just leave you with um, something that will be an encouragement. This is our last slide. When the root is what? There is no reason to fear the storm. Why? Because we're rooted in Christ. You see that right there? Brothers and sisters, we definitely have to pray for one another. Amen? Man, I tell you, this thing is so serious. I find myself spending a lot more time in prayer. Not only for the people of God, but for myself. Do you understand this? Because let me tell you this right here, without the, without the grace of God in my life, I'm going to be shaken out. Do you understand this? Without the grace of God controlling us moment by moment, we're going to be shaken out. Brothers and sisters, can we pray a prayer of consecration? That no matter what comes, even if a hundred more articles like this come out, we're going to be ready for the crisis? Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Eternal Father, as we transition to our last portion of the evening, we want to pray that every single soul, every single family represented, we ask that your divine spirit will bless us, Lord. Please forgive me, Lord, of my sins, my mistakes, and my faults, and my transgressions. Do the same for all of us, Lord. Empower us right now to be ready for the final crisis and give us your grace and glory. And Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for righteousness by faith. But Lord, we want to pray right now that as we leave this place tomorrow, bless me as well as all of us, not just to preach it, but to live it. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. We want to thank the panel for um, today, and God bless you, and we'll transition over. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll start our song service, 12 minutes. We'll start our song service promptly at 10 after 7. All right. Thank you very much, brothers. No, here you go. This is y'all.
19, 126, and 127, and 142.